Competition is something that not only provides better products for the consumer, but also an ever-evolving marketplace where a small company can compete with even the largest competitors. We've seen this several times over the past few years, but today we're not covering the little guy. We're covering the testosterone-fueled, male, male fantasy, fantasy. grim-dark, god-emperor-blessed brand that is the boys-only club, Warhammer. Warhammer is something that I was only recently diagnosed with. You see, I was a Star Wars fan my whole life. Unfortunately, about 13 years ago, I was exposed to my first ever Warhammer game, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. You'll notice I'm treating Warhammer like a disease. Well, it is. Once you're exposed, you slowly descend into the iceberg that is Warhammer. And it even comes in different flavors. If you're watching this and you think you're not a Warhammer fan, let's take a little test, shall we? What is your life? My honor is my life. What is your craft? My craft is death. Does this video make you salivate? Are you foaming at the mouth? No? Congratulations, you're not a malnourished Warhammer video game fan. But for those drooling, let's talk about why there aren't more Warhammer games in the market. First, I want to talk about the biggest issue for any game, you. More specifically, your time. No matter the game, it demands your time. For example, last year we were treated to a few months straight of incredible games. So many games within such a small time frame make gamers pick and choose what they want to sink their time into. Of course, you can buy all the games you want, but not everyone can do that. So the goal of a developer is to create a product so good that you spend all of your time and money on that game over any other game on the market. That's a simple concept. Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. For most developers, they'd be lucky to break even on their titles. But for the minority, meeting the profit expectation is crucial to the title's success. Space Marine is one of the best Warhammer games out there, selling 1.2 million copies in just under two months. Unfortunately, THQ, the publisher, posted a net loss of $92.4 million. Pretty sure Space Marine wasn't the cause since it gained about $72 million alone. However, due to THQ's failure and subsequent shutdown and auction of all of its IPs, Space Marine, for the moment, was dead in the water. With the upcoming Space Marine 2 planned to launch on September 9th of this year, I firmly believe that this will be the second most important game for the future of Warhammer games. But before we talk about that, let's cover more than just Space Marine 1. Let's take a look back at a timeless classic. Dawn of War 1 is what most fans remember being their first time encountering the brain plague that is Warhammer. Released in 2004, this little guy soared to somewhere. Gaming journalism wasn't exactly the best back then, so we don't have any figures. However, there were a few games that did just a little bit better. Do you remember when I said games were competing for your time? Yeah, 2004 was the tuning exams of gaming back then. Always one of the most eagerly awaited video games finally goes on sale. So you're preparing to rewrite retail history. A video game is expected to have bigger first day revenues than any movie has ever had an opening day at the box office. Biggest retail launch in entertainment you history. Know, I know that when I say this, about 80% of the people in America that hear me are go, oh, geez, here's a crazy conservative on TV screaming about the dangers of video games. Let me make this clear. I'm not saying Dawn of War isn't a good game, but if you were a new gamer and you asked me to give you a game to play, 
in 2004, I'd have a real hard time justifying Dawn of War as the choice. But let's look at the RTS genre, since gamers aren't all the same. Dawn of War actually did a fantastic job, but like most games in the RTS genre, it was overshadowed by the monster that is Rome Total War. And there were some other games like Rise of Nations, Battle for Middle Earth, Hearts of Iron, Evil Genius, Crusader Kings, just some other examples that they had to compete with. But overall, it ranked third best strategy game in the year 2004. So naturally, any RTS player would have jumped on it regardless. Unfortunately, once again, real-time strategy games only make up so much of the market. In 2024, as of August 1st, I took the top five game populations from five different genres that I thought were the most popular. First person shooters, role-playing games, action-adventure, real-time strategy, and survival crafting. Out of those five, RTS makes up 3.98% of the total population. That's why I prefer! Obviously, that isn't a perfect conclusion to the market share, but let me just say that out of the 3.6 million total players involved with that small survey, 2.7 million came from FPS. If we translate that same ratio to 2004, it doesn't look too pretty especially when Halo 2 is outselling Pirates of the Caribbean at the box office. So Dawn of War 1 in the RTS genre was successful, but across the board, maybe not so much. Likewise, Dawn of War 2 followed suit releasing in 2009, which also happened to be one of the best gaming years of all time. Saints Row 2, Mirror's Edge, Street Fighter 4, Halo Wars, Killzone 2, Empire Total War, Command & Conquer Red Alert 3, Killing Floor, Infamous, Red Faction Guerrilla, Prototype, Battlefield 1943, Hearts of Iron 3, Halo 3 ODST, Demon's Souls, Uncharted 2, Borderlands, Dragon Age Origins, Star Wars, Force Unleashed, Left 4 Dead 2, Assassin's Creed 2, Modern Warfare 2, Batman Arkham Asylum, Bayonetta, do I have to continue? I don't think it's anyone's fault that Warhammer games continue to come out during years of just pure gold. But it certainly doesn't help the Warhammer game scene when they can't compete against titles that establish genre kings. Games that absorb so many players at a time that they obliterate the player count for other genres entirely. We won't get into Dawn of War 3 for obvious reasons, but even Space Marine 1 went up against Skyrim, Gears of War 3, Portal 2, Arkham City, Mass Effect 2, Uncharted 3, Total War, Shogun 2, it just doesn't stop. We've had plenty of Warhammer games since then, like Total War Warhammer, which proved that a grand strategy Warhammer game can absolutely succeed, and they didn't even touch 40k. Chaos Gate was released in 2022 and hasn't sold well since the real-time tactics genre isn't exactly a shared market, looking at you, XCOM 2, but I will say, Chaos Gate still took the best of the current real-time tactics genre games and melded them pretty well together. So personally, I recommend it. Rogue Trader was released the year after Baldur's Gate, which was all but a death sentence since it had nowhere near the depth nor the features and seemed rushed after Act 3. Bolt Gun was fun, but it was a one and done game without any DLC. Dark Tide was a colossal failure at launch and has it really improved since outside of a few key updates? It's fair to say that the future of Warhammer and the gaming industry is on the line with recent games just not having the returns companies need outside of Total War Warhammer 3, which even then has its own issues. Space Marine 2, in my completely unhinged and horrible opinion, will be the culmination of all of Warhammer's gaming issues. Can it stand against the field of shooters? Can its campaign solidify itself among action-adventure games? Can Space Marine 2 overcome 2024's biggest titles? Will it prosper with post-launch content? There is no character, no setting, and no Warhammer game that could overcome the current position of Warhammer in the gaming world and change it for the better other than Dimitri and Titus of the Ultramarines in Space Marine 2. Open the gates. Care to see who can slay more Xenos for the Chiron? I thought a beast of that statue would offer more sport. Hold them back, dammit! 